Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Well, for the past few weeks, we've been taking a look at broad nibbed pens from various countries. And today, it's the final. What we're going to do is compare the broad nib on this Diplomat Aero representing Germany against this Opus 88 Calaro representing Taiwan and the Pilot Custom Heritage 823 which is representing Japan. So join me now down on the mat. Let's dig on in and take a look at these nibs. Welcome down to the mat. So over the past few weeks, we've been taking a look at broad nibbed pens. And what I've got here is I've got the winners from the three categories we looked at. From Taiwan, I've got an Opus 88 Calaro. From Germany, we've got a Diplomat Aero. And then representing Japan, we've got a Pilot Custom 823. Three really nice pens. Three pens that certainly seem to fit into different niches when you think about the prices because we've got 120 for the Opus 88. We've got 263 for the Diplomat Aero and the 823, that was 394. They're all Australian dollars. It's different prices. We're not really looking at the pens here though. What we want to do is look at the nibs. So let's swap over and look at those nibs. With the pens uncapped, the first thing that really jumps out, the Opus 88 nib, very much smaller than the other two. I believe this is a number five nib, whereas the Diplomat, that's a number six nib, and the Pilot 823, that's a Pilot number 15 size nib, which is, to be honest, very similar to a number six size nib. So definitely, there's the first big difference we see. Let's take a look at each of the nibs. So we'll start here with the Opus 88. I quite like the look of this nib. It's very simple in its decoration. We've got this steel color. I mean, it's a steel nib. We've got, yes, we've got a tiny little border of decoration going around it. But all we've got inside is we've got the word Opus 88, which is the manufacturer. And then down near the bottom, we've got B. Although it's labeled Opus 88, it's made for them by Yoho. So it's a Yoho number no. five nib. The Diplomat Aero, slightly more, I'm not gonna say complicated, but slightly different looking pen. So again, it's that steel color. It's another steel nib. We've got no decorative border. We've just got a line going around. Near the middle, we've got what looks like a flower to me. I believe that's a Diplomat logo. Underneath that, we've got Diplomat since 1822. And then again, we've got B for broad. I haven't been able to 100% confirm who makes the nib. I've looked on the internet, and yes, I know on the internet, you've got to be careful about what you read. But some sites are saying it's a Yoho nib that's made to diplomat specifications. I found one site which says it's a bot nib, and I found another site which says it's made by diplomat. I've not been able to find any real official answer. So I can't 100% say who makes the nib, but I believe it's a Yoho nib made to diplomat specifications, but I may be wrong. And if I am, please drop a comment down below because I'd love to know who makes the nib. Okay, the final nib to look at. This is the Pilot Custom 823. Big difference between this and both the others. This is a 14 karat gold nib. It's a Pilot number 15 size. If we look around here, we've got a really fancy border. So it starts with just a single line going all the way around. Then we've got that little bit of engraving, which looks really nice. Below the breather hole, we've got the word pilot. Then we've got 14K-585, that's the gold content. 15, which is the size of the nib. And then B for broad. Right down near the bottom on this side, I don't know if you can see it, are the numbers 1220. They correspond to when the nib was made. Of the three nibs, I'm tied in terms of looks. I like the ornateness of the pilot nib, but I also like that simple look of the Opus 88 nib. That's enough looking at these. What we really want to know is, well, how do they write? So let's swap over and fetch in the notepad of testing. Here we've got the notepad of testing. A5 notebook, it's made by Oxford and it uses the gorgeous Oxford optic paper, which is a really nice fountain pen friendly paper. Let's do some writing. The first pen, the Opus 88. So we've got here, Opus 88 Calaro. This nib 
it feels nice and springy, nice and soft. As I said, it's a broad nib and it costs 120 Aussie dollars. The ink by Pure Pens and it's John Frost. Now, one comment I will make in this testing, each pen has got different ink in it. I use these pens in my daily life, which is why they've got different inks. Ideal world, we'd have the same ink in each of them, but then I'd find that boring when I'm using them during the day when you've got the same ink colour. I like to have different ink colours. And today we're going to see three very different ink colours. So that does also affect the way that the pen performs on paper. Drying times. So we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, still got a tiny smudge, but that's more or less dry. I'm going to move the mic down to the paper so you can hear the pen write. Let's look for line variation. Then I've got a pressure now and do some of my S's. You can see here where the soft nib is really fetching out that difference in the line width. It's not a flex nib, but certainly I can see a little bit of a wider line. This is the flow test. The ink keeps up really nicely. All in all, I quite like this pen. I'm gonna hopefully catch this on the camera. With the ink, you know, it's this gorgeous, I wanna call it like a greeny teal color, but then it's got beautiful red sheen, which you can really see, hopefully over the camera, as I'm trying to catch the light on that writing. It's soft, it's springy, it's a pleasure to use. It's a pen that you can use for hours on end. It's just so nice. It's gliding over the paper. There's a little tiny bit of tactileness to it though. It's not like writing on glass or writing on ice. All in all, really enjoy it. Let's look at the contender from Germany now. So this is the Diplomat Aero. I've just had to tighten this up because every time I take the cap off this, it's a snap-on cap, but I keep thinking it's a screw one, so I have to start screwing it off. That loosens the barrel. So we've got here a Diplomat Aero. Again, it's got a broad nib. Price-wise, big jump. This was 263 Australian dollars. The ink is by Diamine. And it's called Marine. I love this color ink. I love this shade of ink. I've got a number of different inks, very similar in terms of coloring. This of the ones I've got, this is the one which has got most of the green. The others are more in like that turquoise or blue area. Drying times. So immediate. This is where I have to remember to use a different finger to swipe it. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. To be honest, that's dry there. There's a little tiny smudge at the top, but it's not real much point doing a one minute test. I'll move the mic down to the paper so you can hear the pen right. Line variation, no pressure, adding some pressure. Slightly wider line, could be there's more ink being put down because I put the pressure on. And here's the S's. This nib feels an awful lot stiffer. It's not like writing with a nail, but you can definitely feel it. Flow.
it's another nice experience. Let me just line that paper up a little bit better. I keep knocking it off when I'm writing. I love writing with this pen. The nib's nice. Again, we're getting a little bit of feedback. I would say very similar to the amount that I was seeing with that Opus 88. The nib feels stiffer though. It's not a nail stiff, it's still noticeable. It's not as soft. And I do quite enjoy that soft spring in nature. With this pen, it had a different ink in at the start of this month. It had Dominant Industry Lake. After I'd used it all up, last week I put in a full of Diamine Marine and I'd emptied that converter again within a day because I just love writing with it. And once I start, I just keep going and going and going. It's effortless to use. So this is the second fill of Diamine Marine that I've had in less than a week. It's enjoyable though, as I say, we're seeing a bit of character coming through. What that's to do with the ink as opposed to the nib, that's hard to really quantify. So that was the Diplomat era. When I move the page up, we go, just so we make sure and get everything into the camera for it. So the final pen from Japan. The Pilot Custom 823. Most expensive pen that I have this. So we've got a Pilot Custom 823. I'm going to call out here, it's 14 carat gold, which is AU, and it's a broad nib. This was 394 Australian dollars. The ink by Herban and it's Terre de Fue or Terre de Fue. I'm terrible at mangling the name of this ink. I quite like this. It feels different. It's got the stiffness that I was getting with the area, but it also has got a bit of sponginess to it, a bit of softness. Now, I also have a Pilot Custom Heritage 92, which is another gold nibbed pen, and it's very similar in size to the Coloro, so it's like that standard number five size nib. That's very springy, it's very soft to write with compared to this. And I've got to be honest, I do like that softer nib. Let's look at drying times. So we've got immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Still slightly wet, one minute. Yep, after a minute, that one's nice and dry. So in terms of speed of drying, this is in the middle of the other two. Let's move the mic and write a sentence. line variation so no pressure with pressure and the S's so I am seeing a little bit of a difference in the line again I think that's been helped by the fact it's a 14 carat gold nib flow Again, it's nice. It feels nice. One thing I do see with this is I see a lot more shading coming through. Although where there's no shading, the ink actually does look a bit flat compared to the others. A bit of what my wife would describe as a boring colour. I mean, I quite like it because it's different. You know, I can see where this Ted of where, which I believe is Land of Fire, and see how that comes out in the ink. Really nice though, really pleasant to use. It's certainly got a different sound to it when you're writing there. The other two inks, you know, they had a very similar sound when they were writing, but this, it's definitely louder. And it sounds like, I know it's gonna sound a bit weird to say, but the sound it makes seems a bit more complex. But that's the testing that we're going to be doing on this paper. I'm gonna get this out of the way, and I'm going to fetch in my endless recorder. This is 68 GSM. Tommy River paper. What I've done is I've done just the name of the pen and the name of the ink in here, just so you can see it in a different notebook. Let's fetch in the pens and get it all on the page. Come down a bit, there we go. So you can see here with that Calara and the John Frost, how the ink's looking really nice. We're seeing nice color in there 
with the diamond marine and the unusual color in here with that tear de fouet. But which nib do I prefer? That's what this video is all about. Although I find the Diplomat Aero really nice to write with, certainly for long sessions, the nib, it does feel stiff and my preference is softer nibs. With the 823, again, the nib got a little bit more softness to it, but it's like in between the two, whereas that Claro really enjoy that. It's nice, it's soft, it's spongy. And I just feel like, it actually feels at times like it's just sinking into the paper. I really enjoy it. So for me, the winner of this broad nib showdown goes to the Opus 88 Coloro. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on these? What do you feel about the winning nib that I chose? Is it the same one that you'd have picked? Please, drop your comments down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.